Milling Through History presents Mona Lisa Stolen. When we think of the Mona Lisa, it is undeniably one of the most famous portraits ever created in the history of mankind. However, this particular portrait is unique in the fact that the reason for its fame comes from rather a moment of infamy, as it had been stolen. And if it had never been stolen, perhaps the Mona Lisa would have been an otherwise forgotten portrait. And so as we examine the reason for why this particular painting is so famous, it's important to realize how just a singular decision can make, the, make or break the exact reason for why it can become important. The year was 1911, and at the, this particular point in time, the Mona Lisa was simply a portrait hanging on the wall of the Louvre, and for most Parisians or other worldwide visitors that came to the museum, it was a portrait which really was almost overlooked. As a result of this, because very few people were looking at it, it was also a prime object to be stolen, namely by a former employee who realized there was an opportunity to not only make some money, but also make a name for himself. On August 21st, 1911, Vincenzo Perugia snuck into the Louvre and stole the painting. According to Perugia, he wore a white smock which had been worn by the employees of the museum and entered the building at the start of the day when everyone else was arriving for work. Not being noticed, he reached the gallery where the Mona Lisa was being hung and took it off the wall. In going into the back, and everyone just assumed he was taking it for a cleaning, he would remove the actual portrait from its frame and then wrapping his smock around it would exit the museum with the portrait. Now, no one realized that the Mona Lisa was stolen for a number of days, mainly because it was not exactly uncommon to see portraits being taken down, brought to the back, getting cleaned, and then being brought forward. As such, museum directors and employees just assumed this was happening yet again. But when the realization occurred that this portrait had been stolen, the question was, who did it and where did it go? The police began to search throughout all of Paris for the portrait, but zero success was actually occurring. As they went ahead and questioned all employees, even Perugia was questioned, but he was ruled out as a potential suspect. What the police did not realize was that Perugia had hidden the portrait in a trunk in his apartment and would sit on it for two years before even considering trying to find a way to sell it or repatriate it to Italy. Now, according to Perugia, he wanted to return the portrait to Italy and become a national hero. And when he brought the portrait to an art gallery, the owner convinced Perugia to leave the painting with him after authenticating it. Now, for the gallery owner, being aware of the fact that this stolen piece of art was now in his possession, he felt it was his duty to ensure its return to the Louvre and bring justice upon Perugia. Now, the police would arrest Perugia after two years of searching for the portrait, and when it came time to his prosecution, prosecutors weren't exactly sure how they were to move forward with the crime. Theft was obvious, but what was the motive? Perugia said he was trying to be a national hero and return a stolen piece of art back to Italy where it was originally created. And yet, there had been testimony that said Perugia was also trying to find a way to make a great deal of money to ensure his own financial stability going forward in life. Prosecutors couldn't prove one way or another the motive for the crime, but they were at least able to get a conviction on the theft itself. As a result of this, Perugia was sentenced to only seven months in prison for stealing this, at the time, little-known portrait. The unintended consequence of the theft, though, was that the painting became far more valuable and even more famous. And as such, tourists flocked to the Louvre in order to see the famed Mona Lisa, and for years, it continues to be a massive draw, even to this date. Now today, the Mona Lisa is well protected, and no one is actually able to approach the portrait within a few feet of it and it remains behind a thick piece of glass, allowing people to view it, but not touch it. As for Perugia, he would get out of prison and enlist in the Italian army during World War I. Following the war, he returned to France, got married, and had a single child. 
By this time, he went back to his birth name of Pietro Perugia and would pass away on October 8, 1925, with very few people even realizing who he was and that he was the man responsible for turning the Mona Lisa into a little-known portrait and rather the most famous portrait in all the world. For more information, please consider these suggested titles. Be sure to click on the left-hand side of the screen to subscribe to our show, and on the right-hand side for our latest episode. And we will see you again for the next episode of Milling Through History.